Just a quick note before we begin, this is just a reminder that um, in preparation for this lesson, what I did was I uploaded a bunch of PDFs other than the resources, which we're going to talk about later. But you'll see on these tabs, I have um, these PDFs that load through when I go onto the tab. And what I've done to upload these PDFs to the space is simply click on the plus icon over here and then import PDF slash office. And what this will do will open a window on your computer and you can browse to wherever your PDF is. And when you click on it, you actually have the option to either, um, you, first off, you can choose the number of pages that you want. You can select all of them. You can deselect all of them. But in this case, I'm gonna select all. I'm gonna click next. And what I want is for every document, every document that gets imported from the PDF, every page, I want it to be all on one single whiteboard tab in my space. So what I'm gonna click on is all in a single whiteboard tab, okay? We have the option to put it each on a separate whiteboard tab for each page, or we can insert it into the current whiteboard tab. But what I want is it to be on a new whiteboard tab, but all in a single one. So I'm gonna click import, and you can see how it's now automatically opened a new tab for the PDF, and here it is. And now I can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down, and then we can start annotating. And back to the lesson, because as you can see, um, I've already labeled these accordingly. So I'm just gonna delete that for now. So on the first tab, um, I've called the tab mathematics with an exclamation mark. I've locked all of these tabs here at the top, meaning the student cannot delete the tabs by accident. Um, I'll show you what it looks like if it's allowed to be closed. So if, it's cl if it can be closed, you can click the X over here and close if you've deleted something by accident you can always click the undo button in the notification that shows up at the top over here so i'm going to click undo i'm just going to keep this locked by clicking disallow tab to be closed and we're going to start off here so i've got a drawing tablet connected to my computer um, what you use is completely up to you our, our platform is also completely compatible with an ipad to start off with, I'm going to choose the draw tool and click on normal and I'm just going to draw a nice welcome to message to Kitty. And to begin with, we're going to start with counting. So this is just a very simple exercise for some of your younger students. Um, I'm going to ask Kitty to simply fill in the number corresponding to the number of fruit that they can see. Thank so you. Kitty can either draw, uh, for example, she drew a number three for those three limes over there. And for carrots, she's just going to draw six. Kitty also has the option to use the text tool if she doesn't feel like drawing the number inside the circles, which is what she's doing on the screen now. Cool, and you'll notice that this resource, this image that I've uploaded to the whiteboard came directly from our resource drawer. So I'll show you now just an example of how to reinsert it. So let me just erase what Kitty said and let me select the, the select tool. Then I'm gonna click on this. I've locked the resource, so I'm just gonna unlock it and then I'm just gonna delete it. And if I want to re-upload it to our space and our whiteboard on the counting tab, I can click on insert resource button over here. I can go down to math and I'm going to type count because it's a counting image and it's that easy to just to put it in our whiteboard. If we get lost, so, so for example, I've zoomed out too far here and I've moved around, I can just click the zoom button here and click zoom to fit and it will automatically snap right back into place so you and your student will not get lost. Okay, let's go to trig and calculus at the top. And this is an example of how we can use equations and graphs in our space. Um, at the top here, we have an example of some calculus. And here we can see the derivative and how to work out a derivative of an equation. Um, and side by side, I've got two graphs here. And what you'll notice is this first graph over here is a parabola, it's x squared. And on the right is the derivative version of that equation which is 2x. So I am just going to write this over here as 2x. I'm just going to go back to the draw tool. Okay. And I'm going to draw the derivative of this graph, which is 2x over here. And I'm going to explain to my student Kitty that um, the derivative is simply the rate of change of the parabola. So at any given point, 
This is how you calculate the rise of a run or the gradient of x squared by taking derivative. Um, okay, for example, if I want to tell Kitty how to calculate the derivative the quick hand way instead of using the limit um, as h tends to zero, we can copy paste x squared and I'm going to move it. If it's locked, sorry, let me unlock it and I'm going to move it over here, make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to tell her that in order to do it, we're going to look at the two and we're going to times it to the coefficient. So that becomes 2x squared. To x squared and now what we can do is i'm just going to change this to blue so you can see this a bit better and now what we do is we take the exponent and minus it by one and the final answer is 2x so you take the exponent times it to the coefficient and then deduct one from the exponent to find the derivative. Next, I want to teach my student a little bit more about trigonometry. In this case, I'm taking Sokotoa. Um, just to remind her, I'm going to remind the student that S stands for sine, O stands for hypotenuse, and H stands for hypotenuse. Co is cosine, and T, um, T is tan. And over here, um, this is another image that I've added from the resource drawer. Again, if I click on insert resource and I go to math and I type trig, you can find this resource as well. Over here, I can do this for my student if I want, teaching them about how to calculate the angle of X. And in this case, we take, um, in this case, we take seven as the opposite and we take um, nine as the hypotenuse. And since we're using our pot opposite and hypotenuse, we're going to use sine of angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Um, over here, sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, so 7 over 9, and then we take sine of 7 over 9, so minus 1 equals theta theta equals okay and I can work that out on a calculator and that comes to 51 degrees previously I showed you um, from my perspective teaching the student how to find the derivative of the parabola x squared but now I'm going to ask Kitty and you're going to see her student perspective of adding the graph and using what I've taught her to find the derivative So she has added the graph and she can also move that graph around. So I'm going to ask her to move it next to the other graph. Notice how I can see my student's cursor moving around in real time. That's extremely useful just to see um, where your student is and if they're not lost. In this example, I am using um, a PDF that I found online um, from a free resource. This sort of PDF is useful, uh, for example, in um, SAT preparation or A-levels or um, AP Math, whatever you do um, from grade or year 12 onwards. Um, and in this example, we're going to look at exercise 3, question 1b, sine 2 of x is equal to negative 1 for negative pi, uh, for x is between negative pi and pi. And what we can do to make our lives a lot easier, because usually... Um, you would have to draw out the graph yourself. You can actually add and insert the, the graph on your side. So I would ask Kitty now to add the graph of sine of 2x and just paste it next to question 1b. Great. Cool. Now she's, found, uh, she's added the graph. I can now use the graph to easily find um, what the value of x is for when y is equal to negative 1. So if I zoom in on my graph, you can see that this is labeled from 0 to negative 5 on the y-axis. And what I can do is I can just circle where negative 1 is. Let's just change the color to something more um, easier to read. Let's try yellow. This, no, yellow's not looking nice. <laughs> I'm changing my mind. Um, let's try red. And let's change it to a thin drawing tool. And I'm going to circle where it is there. 
which is minus one. And now let's um, draw a, just a couple of dots to where it matches on the graph. This goes up to about there. And this is the value of x, where this is the graph of sine of 2x is equal to minus 1. So the value of x is, I'm not going to work it out right now, but approximately um, if this is negative 1 on the x-axis is approximately um, negative, negative 0 0.75 like that. And finally, let's go over to SAT prep two. And in this example, we are going to be looking at, let me just zoom out here quickly. We're going to be looking at um, question number seven over here. This is an example where Kitty can work out the answer on her side and she can show me the working by holding up her notepad um, to her video stream. And I can then screenshot that and add it straight to the space which is very useful. Okay, so Kitty is going to hold up her working like so, and I'm going to use the whiteboard snapshot tool to take a uh, video snapshot of her stream. And I'm going to click Kitty's video. And just like that, you can see that it has pasted an image of the solution. So I can paste that. I'm going to hold control just to resize it and drag to resize. And we can see that her answer is 2x cubed plus x squared plus 11x plus 11, which we can see is the answer over here.